Hello, awesome fellas. How's everyone doing today? So, I've been spending way too many hours in Assetto Corsa, probably more than my sleep schedule would recommend, and I just couldn't settle for the same old look as everyone else. I wanted my cars and overall gaming experience to be as unique as my snack choices during a late night race. So I took some time doing DIY quirks and features to spice things up, adding that visual flair and extra immersion every time I hit the track. And believe it or not, I did all of this with just Notepad as my secret weapon of choice. All right, before we jump into the tutorials, let me show you what kind of magic you can pull off using just Notepad. We'll be doing some semi-in-depth tutorials, but first, here's a quick preview of what's included. First up is the two-color blinking pit stop lights, a customization that lets you have two different colors for your pit lane or speed limiter lights instead of the usual single color. These colors are combined with a customized blinking pattern for an extra unique effect. Then we've got blinking brake lights, where the brake lights will flash when you step hard on the brake pedal, perfect for showing off those intense braking moments. Next is adding or modifying DRL and high beam. Most cars use the same object for both low beam and high beam lights, so I separated the high beam using a different object for better customization. Then there's improving interior texture, which I do when the car's interior doesn't quite match the visual vibe I'm after, or if the texture quality is lacking and needs a serious upgrade. Let's not forget about the windows tint customization. You can adjust the transparency or tint of the car's windows and other glass materials, giving your car anything from a subtle shade to a fully darkened look. And now let's talk driver animations. First, we've got the shifting animation. This lets you apply hand movement animations based on whether the car is using paddle shifters or a manual gear stick, giving that extra touch of realism in the cockpit view. Then there's the pedal response animation, where the driver's foot moves when you're accelerating or braking. It may not always be perfectly aligned with the pedals, but it still adds an extra layer of immersion. Next up is a series of custom emissive light indicators. These show you lights for things like peak RPM, ABS, traction control, delta indicator, and more. Then we move on to digital info on the steering wheel, which lets you display additional car or race information, usually found in the HUD or MoTeX screen, directly on your steering wheel for a more immersive experience. After that, we've got custom paint jobs, which believe it or not, can be done in Notepad as well. I'll walk you through how to create cool effects like chameleon or dual tone colors in the tutorial. Then there's custom exhaust smoke and flames. Sure, there are already plenty of tutorials out there, but I've included this just in case we can pick up something new along the way. Finally, there's what I like to call dynamic intro camera. Basically, after the loading screen finishes, this customization gives you a moving camera shot of your car before anything else happens. A cool, slightly cinematic effect that adds a nice touch to the game. I almost forgot to mention, another key part of upgrading my visuals is the custom pit crew skin mod I made and released a few months ago. We'll skip the tutorial for that in this video, but you can check out the link above for the full guide and download. It'll show you how to easily apply the skins to your cars and give your pit crew a fresh new look. So that's a quick rundown of all the cool things I've done using just Notepad. To make editing even smoother and more visually friendly, I actually use Notepad++. It's got custom skins and color coding that really make it easier to keep track of different text and code files. Definitely worth trying out. Now, let's get into the tutorials and break down how you can do all of this yourself. There are two main ways to make customizations like this using Notepad. One way is by modifying the extconfig.ini file in the car's extension folder, and the other is by editing various .ini files in the data folder. For most of these customizations, including this one, we'll be working in the extconfig.ini file. I've prepared all the base codes you'll need, which you can download from the link in the description. For simplicity, we'll refer to this as the base code throughout the tutorial. First up is the two color blinking pit stop lights. Start by copying the pit stop lights base code and pasting it into your target car's extconfig.ini file. Once in game, activate the object inspector tool and use alt click to inspect the object you want to convert into emissive pit lights. For example, let's select this object here. Simply click its name in the object inspector to copy it 
and then paste the name into the pre-made pit stop lights code. This will be our yellow light. For the second blinking red light, follow the exact same process as before. Use the Object Inspector tool to select another object, copy its name, and paste it into the second part of the code where the red light is set up. Once you've done that, save the file to instantly apply the changes. You'll see the adjustments live in game as soon as you hit save. As you can see here, the lights alternate between yellow and red, giving us the desired blinking effect. Of course, you can choose any colors you like later, but for now, we're sticking with yellow and red. Now, about the color code in this configuration, it's made up of four parts. The first three numbers are the RGB values, and the fourth number represents the intensity. Watch what happens when I tweak the intensity here. It increases the glare. Personally, I prefer this method over using a higher RGB value like 300, 250, 0, 1. For example, I'll use 35, 18, 0, 8. The 8 controls the intensity. The higher the intensity, the brighter the light will appear. All right, we've got both yellow and red lights working at the front end of the car. Now repeat the exact same steps to apply the blinking lights to the rear of the car. Simply paste the rear yellow light object name into the name field right after the front yellow light object name we used earlier, separated by a comma like this. Then do the same for the red lights with the front and rear objects separated by a comma as well. This method allows you to add as many lights as you want. Just don't go overboard unless you're aiming for a mobile disco. Keep it balanced for a cool, sleek effect. Now, to really bring the pit stop lights to life, there's one more detail to add. Grab the bounced pit stop lights from the base code and paste it into your extconfig.ini. This feature makes the light bounce off the surroundings, adding a more realistic effect. For the yellow bounced light, simply copy one of the yellow light object names we used earlier and paste it into the bound to section of the bounce lights. Repeat the same process for the other lights. And there you have it. With the bounce lights in place, the pit stop lights look even more dynamic and realistic. Now that you've got the hang of using my base code and know how to pick objects from the car using the Object Inspector tool, the next parts of the tutorial should be a breeze. Let's move on to the blinking brake lights. Just like before, start by grabbing the blinking brake light code from the base and paste it into your car's extconfig.ini. Next, find the brake emissive object using the Object Inspector, copy its name, and place it in the name field of the code. Once that's done, save the file and you're ready to roll. Let's take a closer look at the details. The input threshold is set to 0.95, meaning the brake lights will blink when you hit the pedal with 95% force. Feel free to tweak this to any percentage of braking force you want to trigger the blinking. As for the fallback headlights color, this ensures the brake lights turn on like normal when the headlights are activated. You can also fine-tune the blink speed by adjusting the blink frequency hertz value. The higher the number, the faster the blink. If you're feeling extra flashy, go ahead and make it super fast. Just, you know, try not to blind the driver behind you, unless you're aiming for some on-track mind games. Next up is adding or modifying DRL and high beam. For the DRL daytime running lights, the process is just as straightforward as before. Same method, simple stuff. Now take a look at the code for the DRL. You'll notice the input trigger is set to speed limiter instead of light. This is because I want the DRL to change color when the car is in a speed limit zone or inside the pit lane. You can easily adjust the RGB values here to modify the color to suit your style. The rest of the configuration is pretty self-explanatory. As for the high beam, it's just as flexible. Pick any object to assign it as the high beam light and adjust the color to whatever suits your taste. Whether you want a cool white high beam or something more unique, it's all up to you. Let's head inside the cockpit for the next part, improving interior texture. In the base code, I've included different texture options for various interior materials you might want to change. 
One important thing to note is that this isn't a plug and play situation. You'll need to adjust certain parameters to get the texture just the way you want it. Let me show you what I mean by changing the texture on this object in the middle of the steering wheel. First, from the base code, copy the first line of code and paste it into the car's extconfig.ini. Then choose any texture from the list below. Let's use one of the carbon textures for this example. Paste the texture code and add the object name in the meshes field here. Save the file and voila, the new texture is applied. Now that we've got it in place, check out how the texture changes when I adjust the detail scale parameter. It tweaks the level of detail on the surface. You can also change the sharpness of the texture by lowering the detail normal blend. Simple tweaks like these really help fine tune the look you want. I encourage you to experiment with the different parameters to see how they affect the texture. Don't be afraid to play around with the values. You won't break the game. Worst case scenario, you'll end up with something so eye-blindingly bad it might feel like you've just walked into a design disaster from the 80s. But hey, no harm in testing your taste. One more thing to keep in mind. You'll see two input fields in the texture codes, meshes, where you'll put the object name, and materials, where you input the object's material. And that's it. Here's the final result of the changes I made to the interior texture of this car. Also, don't be fooled by the name materials interior in the code. These textures can also be applied to the exterior parts of the car. For example, check out this wheel. I've given it a nice carbon look using the same texture technique. I'm using the term texture in this tutorial instead of material because it focuses more on the visual changes you can see. While the code refers to material, I think texture better conveys the improvements in the appearance of these surfaces. All right, now it's time to talk about the windows tint because who doesn't want their car to look a little more mysterious, right? Head back to the base code and find the windows tint section. Grab the first line of the glass code and paste it into the car's config. I've prepped four different glass codes for you. The first two are perfect for car windows. One is for the HUD display. And the last one, photoelastic glass, works great for headlight glass. Of course, you're not limited to just these uses. Feel free to apply them to any glass or transparent surface on the car. Want tinted headlights? Go for it. Heck, turn your entire windshield into a privacy screen if you're feeling bold. Each code already comes with a handy little explanation for every parameter, so you can easily experiment and see how your car's windows or any glass material will look. Get creative, but remember, even the darkest tint won't make you immune to bad parking jobs. And that's a wrap for part one of this tutorial series. We've covered some great visual customization so far, but there's still plenty more to explore in part two, where we'll continue improving your car's look and immersion you won't want to miss what's coming next. Did you know that 99% of you watching aren't subscribed? So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as part two drops. Trust me, it'll be worth it. This is Faye signing out. Keep your mods stylish, your car's looking sharp, and as always, stay awesome.